CataractCoach.com. Cataract with global designer laxity. How do you complete the case and secure the eye? Well, let's watch carefully here. Now, another patient has overall designer laxity here. Poking in, you can see there's a little bit of shaking or moving of the lens nucleus, but fortunately able to penetrate the lens capsule with just the forceps and achieve a pretty good looking capsule rectus here. Now, our guest surgeon here is Dr. Miguel Richichi. He was on our podcast yesterday, so check it out. If you're not already following the Cataract Coach podcast, it's going to teach you how to be successful. Now, he just did a high dissection of the nucleus out of the bag. I like that technique. We've obviously spent the video up here. And so this technique of bringing it out of the bag, I think, may produce less stress on the existing zonal support. Wow, now he's got the entire nucleus in the anterior chamber now. Be careful of this, though. If you do it this way you really can put a lot more phaco energy into the endothelium of the cornea. So be careful there. Let's see the technique going in here now. Okay, looks like a groove down the middle. And I wish we would cut that drape a little bit more to get a better visualization, but let's see, splitting the nucleus. Hey, did I tell you about Retina Rounds, our absolutely amazing sister channel? A new retina video every single day, plus the Retina Rounds podcast. I promise you're going to love it. Now, you can see our guests are here just an extra viscoelastic to protect the cornea, and now you've got the two halves. So now at this point, you can certainly chop each half. So stop and chop technique here. And again, we've spread the video up just so we can be efficient. Now, he's an experienced surgeon, does a great job here, but keep in mind this video, unedited, it was about 30 minutes long. So that's okay. Things can take time. You have to be patient here. So going into the rest of the nucleus, just aspirate this down. We're going to slow it down when it comes down to time for inserting the CTR and the IOL. And again, it'd be nice to cut that drape there so you have a full view of the cornea. Right now, that nasal drape is blocking part of the view. And as a surgeon, you may not realize that, but you'll suffer a little bit throughout the case. So definitely take your time to get the drapes the way you like them here. Now, last bit of the cataracts coming out the nucleus. And you got to protect that capsule bag. It could flop around a little bit. Let's slow down the video here a little bit. In just a minute after we get all these pieces out. There we go. Nicely done there. Not too much cortex left behind. And then once you get these, yep, Visco Alaska is a smart move there. Keep that, absolutely keep the bag away. And you can actually just pull these pieces out of the incision now. Or you can go in with a finger probe again. There we go. Just aspirate these last couple little tiny pieces. And the bag looks pretty clean. And I like the technique of putting in more viscoelastic here and not letting that bag collapse. So here's the viscoelastic, putting it in there. Good, good, good. Again, very little cortex remaining. You could probably use the viscoelastic to visco dissect some of the cortex, and you could even just put the CTR in now. So let's watch the video here. You can see you have a full view of the cornea at this point, but when you push the eye a little bit in the nasal canvas, it'll disappear under that plastic drape. So a little more viscoelastic, getting a good capsule bag filled. Here comes the CTR. Let's see what's happening here. Yep, looks like CTR coming out. It's going to be aiming towards the left. So since you in the left hand here and help deliver, deliver, deliver this thing. And you, I like that technique, as you know, using that since to guide placement, make sure it goes in the capsule bag. And then once that's done, yeah, you can keep guiding it out nice and easy. And that should go all the way around pretty easily without too much resistance. If there's a lot of resistance, it may not be in the bag. But this looks great. This looks like it's right in the capsule bag. Here's the leading or the trailing end of it. And you can see the leading part coming up behind it too. There it is. Now you can see both eyelids in the capsule bag. So good job there. Let's see what we're doing for the lens. Here comes the lens. Looks like a three-piece lens. Okay. Now the three-piece lens, you know what's really helpful with global zonal laxity? David Chang taught me this. Putting the haptics in the sulcus and doing an optic capture. So 7L rule. Make sure the leading haptic looks like a number 7, which it does. Trailing haptic like a capital letter L. 7L rule in effect. Get this dialed in. I'd put the haptics in the sulcus, and then I'd optic capture, and that's going to give great long-term stability. It really helps a lot. So when the capture bag is held open by the CTR, the haptics on the sulcus and the optic goes behind the rexus, buttonhole through there, and by keeping that optic behind that rexus, it prevents the anterior capsule, the rexus, from becoming phimotic. And so let's see, get that Sinsky hook and place that haptic where you want it. Sometimes it's easier to help to dial these, but there you go, nicely positioned. Maybe dial it a little bit and get that other haptic placed as well. There it is in the sulcus, very nicely done. And then an optic capture here. And that will give great long-term stability. So again, if you have global zonal laxity from a case like pseudo exfoliation or whatever else, and you notice that, a nice technique for great long-term stability is a CTR in the capsule bag and then a three-piece lens with the haptics and the sulcus and the optic captured through the rexus. That will give great long-term stability. More so than if you put the entire three-piece lens in the bag with the CTR. 
In fact, David Chang had a video, which I learned from, where he had a CTR in the bag, he put the entire three-piece lens in the bag, and had the patient look left and right, or he moved the eye around, and you can see the entire thing was shaking. He had pseudophagodinesis. But then he reversed it, and he put, put the haptics in the sulcus, the same case. And then Opta captured it and had the patient move around and move the eye around, and there was no movement. There was no more phacodinesis, pseudophacodinesis. So really a neat technique here. At the end, seal up the incisions. I'd also make sure there's no prolapse of any vitreous. Maybe a pinch of triamcillin would be helpful. Here, a little hydration of the incisions. But great job here. Interesting case. Now, if you didn't hear our podcast yesterday, you definitely got to check it out. The Cattle Coach Podcast, we've got more than 100 episodes. The episode from yesterday with Dr. Richichi was explaining how he keeps up his passion for learning and even though he's an accomplished cataract and anterior segment surgeon, he's now doing retina training. That is amazing. Now, I don't know if it's in me to do a complete retina fellowship now at this point of my career, but I was really impressed by his enthusiasm and his attitude. It's really something you'd have to check out. The sole purpose, the entire purpose of the Cataract Coach Podcast is to make you a more successful ophthalmologist in your career. And I think there's so much to learn from other people. You will really enjoy it. It's only an hour. It's on all podcast services. Heck, if you listen to it at, at 2x speed, it's only 30 minutes. But you'll learn a lot. And I promise you'll thank me later. And there's also, by the way, a Retin' Around podcast, which is fantastic. Again, so much to learn from these successful ophthalmologists. Remember, check out Retin' Around, our sister channel. It is amazing. And, of course, I already know you subscribe to cataractcoach.com.